The new manager is a loyal, hard-working employee. Yes. The obvious choice for the job. He's right. A name you all know. It starts with an S. That's me. Please welcome our new manager. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy. I'm in you your window. Don't get it, we. In you win dough, but if you win it, when it's finished, in the end, you win dough, man. Let's go. Look. Back at it like a bad. Have another video for you guys. Um, this is a story time video. I haven't really done these in a minute, but I might do a couple of these. <laughs> see how they go and stuff like that. Integrate those because I it's it's a lot of stuff I want to talk about and um like. I just think it's interesting. First of all, if you guys seen the uh, beginning part of the video, the SpongeBob reference, I was just kind of chilling and I, I wasn't sure what kind of video I was gonna do today. And the SpongeBob thing had me think about a lot of stuff that like actually relates to for myself. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I was like, you know what? I got a story to tell. <laughs> so first of all, these jobs, these nine to five jobs, these nine to five jobs that we work. It's, it's crazy sitting there thinking like, they're not career jobs, they're definitely not, but we make the best that we can with these jobs and stuff. But I, to me and to this day, I had to just come to the conclusion that maybe some things aren't meant to happen because I think it's really weird that the jobs that I'm trying, I'm pushing for the, I have the, the mindset the determination, my, the potential, and, and so forth, and to go to the next level. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, okay, so what is, like, dragging me along and stuff like that? Like, what, what's stopping me from getting to that point? These jobs, I mean, I think is pretty much a well-known thing for most people that they don't care about you. They don't. They show it in many ways. They don't care about you at all. They, they, they don't appreciate you. They don't appreciate nothing that you do. It's crazy. So, um, I just feel like every time I'm in a job, it's always whenever I want to either seek a different position within the job or promotion, I'm always kind of getting like strung along and I'm like, what's going on? I'm ready. Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, seriously. But listen, first of all, I, when I first came down here thinking about like what opportunities that can happen just applying myself and so forth um, originally my original plan working with my uncle didn't work out like I thought it was going to work out um, that was kind of my initial goal because I was ready to go and I came down here and it was either we was either going to do like a like like working together um, with like I think I think it's like Amazon or like a trash truck. Thing. It was gonna be something where we worked together and it was gonna be like a team effort thing, and we was gonna be making bank on it because it's it's like it, like an uncle and his nephew just like teaming up and just conquering the conquering like what needed to be done and stuff like that, which is fine. I mean, stuff happens or whatever. Because realistically, everything that put me in my path from when I started to now is how I ended up the way I am. Cause I didn't even think about doing YouTube or anything like that. And so now I'm doing YouTube. So <laughs> that's what's funny. But I come down here and so that didn't work. The first job I actually started working at was Marshall's. I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, Marshall's, it was, it was, it was definitely, it gave me like the kind of foundations that I need from when I went over to Aldi because there was a lot of similar stuff, even though Audi is a little bit more, but I was glad to be able, that'd be my first place I worked when I came down here. But um, originally, after I was working at Audi, Marshalls, and then I was working at a bookstore at my college that I was going to, my community college. And the community college, I actually, um, I was doing that for a little bit, and they saw that I was determined to try to stay there because it was a seasonal thing, and they were getting rid of people and weren't sure who they was gonna keep and stuff. And the owner of that area had told me to call up 
the director for the daycare center that was also on that campus. I'm like, okay, cool. You know what? New opportunity, new opportunity presented itself, sure. And I loved that job. That job was beautiful. I would have stayed there if, excuse me, if um, things were a little bit more put together when, with the people at the front desk. They kind of discombobulated, but, and then pay. I really wish they paid teachers more because teachers are underappreciated and underpaid, and it's ridiculous. But that was one of the least stressful jobs I ever worked at. It was a beautiful thing. And even if I was having a bad day, the kids would just sit there and be like, Hey, Mr. Elijah, hi, woo, how's it going? Let's play tag around the playground and stuff. And it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Have fun with them and stuff. I just had to remember that kids are impressionable. So while I'm sitting there doing acrobatics and gymnastics, Spider-Man type stuff, flipping and hopping and jumping. Listen, since I've been a kid till now, bro, you you cannot have me on the playground and think I'm not going to be flying around like Spider-Man or something like that, flipping around, jumping over the quick. Bro, like that, that had me die. It was a beautiful thing, but you, they told me I can't do that because the kids might try to copy me. But it's like the kids, they're running around, they, we're all chasing each other and stuff. But me... I don't just like to run around. I like to maybe like, I like use my hand and like flip over the slide or do like a jump, climb up on top of the the slide or climb up top of the um, things or what, like the, the different playground equipment that they had or whatever. It was always like one big set, but it was still kind of cool playing with that stuff like that. Like no one can get me if I like, I really was like over there like Spider-Man. Like that stuff was hilarious, but it was a beautiful thing interacting with those kids, man. So when I first started working there, I actually, I was put in charge of the front desk. I was covering somebody who was sick. And it was crazy because I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, like this is actually not bad. And I was handling a lot of that work, which is still going to be on my resume because I could do some desk job work, man, which that's probably what I need to go. What they're doing this grocery store type stuff. It's like, come on. But like... <laughs> I, I'm over there sitting there thinking to myself, like, this is not bad. I'm doing the um, desk work or whatever. And then they had me slowly integrated that for me also working in the kitchen. Eventually, I went from doing a lot of the desk work, helping them out and stuff like that. Once I learned how to do it, stuff like that. And I was giving the teachers potty breaks and stuff. I felt like I was a part of the front desk and stuff. And eventually, they transitioned me over to being in the kitchen more, which I didn't mind doing. But then they added like 200 more people at the front desk. And I'm just like, well, shoot, I can't even do the front desk work no more because they got got people there already. So, I mean, like, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm in the kitchen now, so it's all good. I'm in the kitchen doing my thing, or whatever. Not not even an issue. I'm sitting there like, eh, I'm I'm just chilling. I'm like, it's all it's all groovy. It's all gravy. Like I'm I'm making the food for the kids and stuff like that, but. It started to get boring when you run out of stuff to do. That's why I didn't mind doing the desk work and being in the kitchen because I had stuff to do. It, it was like, okay, cool. I had a huge, I had something to do from the time I got there to the time I leave. It was never a dull moment. I was like, bet. Then after I finished my stuff, I could go ahead, cook the food for the kids and stuff, check on the food and everything like that, take it out, everything like that, put it in the bowls for them. The, the, like the, it was beautiful and the people at the daycare center appreciated me like um, all the teachers and everything and the kids loved me so that was, I like that it was pretty cool um, I felt like though with me transitioning and then giving kids potty breaks and stuff and me being in the kitchen giving the teachers potty breaks being in there with the kids and stuff the kids start to see me and stuff and I'm in the classrooms a lot so I'm sitting there thinking like okay I'm in the classrooms. It's pretty cool, you know. Interact with the kids, everything like that. This is it's a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing. Um, interacting with the kids and everything, and I'm like, okay. So now I'm starting to get the idea that I like to be in the classrooms a lot because I'm out in the classrooms a lot, and it's getting to the point where I'm literally always in the classroom, just checking on the teachers, right? Like, job's phenomenal, but then. I'm sitting in like, I don't know what it was. I wasn't going to appreciate it. But after a while, I had the idea that I want to do be an aide, which 
would allow me to be in the classrooms. Now, I was going through the classes and everything like that, like the, the classes um, getting my certificates and stuff. So I got like six certificates or whatever for the classes I took. And I didn't mind, that was, they may still come in handy. I got them, like, I got them in like my binder or something and somewhere and I think it's in my drawer or something like that. But it's like, it's a beautiful thing. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself like, okay, I want to be an aide. I was told, like, I got to take these classes, stuff like that, get a certain amount of hours, stuff. I didn't know, they didn't tell me how many hours originally they made it. See, my, the impression was kind of like, you go to a couple classes and you could be good. A couple classes, you're going to think, I mean, maybe, maybe 10, maybe 10 classes, maybe 20 classes, you know, you got to get a certain amount of hours, maybe six hours, maybe 20. I don't, I, I don't remember how many hours I actually was supposed to get, but it, they made it seem way lower than the actual amount and then when i actually found out the amount i was like oh i gotta i gotta keep doing this and keep doing this and, and stuff like that and it was it was just crazy but i'm sitting there thinking like okay let me i'm gonna get these certificates get i'm going to them i'm showing that i want to do this i'm always in the classrooms and stuff i i do an interview and they say my interview was phenomenal okay i do the interview i'm i already worked this so i'm doing an interview i talk to them i do an interview I answered the questions like really well, they said, um, and they said they would love to have me as an aide. I just have to um, get a certain, it's just the hours that, I, that I'm supposed to have in order to be um, in the classroom and stuff. And I'm like, I'm already in the classrooms, bro. They they playing games, but it's like, I that's how jobs be. They, I feel like I be getting to run around and stuff, and I'm like, so like, just sit there. And okay, fine, get hours and stuff like that, but... Then all of a sudden, I'm being told, like, you know what? It's actually like a grant or something that's going to cover me, so I'm good. That's that's kind of the... the <laughs> can't even get my words out. That's kind of the logistics of the whole situation. Like, they, that's what they said. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, cool. And, like, she... The director approached me out, like, in the hallway or whatever. It's like, yeah, like basically, just tell me, like, you're pretty much going to be in the classrooms. You're going to start putting you in the classrooms soon. And then nothing happened. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm like still kind of just doing the same. I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't like to work at a place. Like I could work my hardest. I could work my ass off. But for what, why would I sit there and like stay at a company that's not, that just doesn't appreciate? Why would I sit there and they don't appreciate me? And I'm just getting strung along and stuff like that. And I'm like, come on now. This is. Nah, man, they <laughs> tripping, man. That that's that's was crazy, but it was all good. I it actually was fine for the most part, cause maybe, like I said, maybe it wasn't meant. But <clears throat> I'm sitting there, like I was, it, I was trying to see if it was meant stuff like that. It was weird about working at a daycare center. I mean, guys could work at daycare center, act, interact with the kids, but some places or sometimes in general people act like it's weird for a guy to want to work and interact with kids like something's wrong with me i i mean there's probably some weirdos out there but like come on man i can't i can't just love the job the same way a female teacher loves the job with working with kids come on now come on man they i don't know I, it's always that small impression or whatever because like some of the kids they interact with me they love seeing me and stuff and i lie to you not some of the kids they they were telling so this is this is the funny thing like some of the kids they always sit there oh can you come to my birthday party and stuff like like I can't come I can't come to your birthday party like that's crazy but it, like it's it's you still interact with the kids and stuff like that then they telling their parents that they want me to come to the birthday party and they want me to be there because they really like me and stuff and I'm like I'm not telling them to say this these are kids like, bro like. That's, that's the kind of impression that I had on them because they, they interact with me all the time. I'm always in there. I'm always there. I work every day. That was like my, was my, my job. I'm part of the three jobs I was working. That was like my, my main job or technically my part-time job, even though I went to Audi in the evening time at that point. So <laughs> that's, but yeah, so it's, it was interesting because some, it was, I, I forgot which of the parents was it, but one of the parents was trying to talk to the teachers to kind of see like why her daughter was so interested in me going to her birthday party or coming to her house and i'm just like i don't know 
Maybe she see me as like an older brother. So I don't, I don't remember. Does she? I don't remember she had an older brother. She may, or maybe she not. She may not have had an older sibling in general. She might have had a younger sibling, and that's she was like, okay, like cool, older, whatever. So that's maybe that was just her mindset. I don't, I don't know, but that's look. It was, it was that that kind of threw me off, but that wasn't why I was like I left. I just. I didn't really see the potential of being there. It was less pay. They weren't trying to have me in there doing what I wanted to do and stuff like that. And then after a while, I started getting restrictions and stuff, acting like I couldn't go into classrooms unless the teachers called up the front desk and asked me, asked, excuse me, the front desk permission for me to go to the classroom in order for me to be in there covered for bathroom breaks and stuff. And it wasn't like that at first. I, they just would, hey, Mr. Elijah, can you come give me a potty break? Sure. Then they all of a sudden, you got to call up the front desk and stuff. And this is how as backwards the, the front desk was, bro. Like, first of all, they wouldn't even communicate with each other. The director would do stuff and not tell the people at the front desk. And, like, well, one day that this happened... And they and she gave me like a I think she I think I think she gave me a paper something something just it was certain stuff or whatever I'm talking about like they got a call up and stuff and um, the kids they were saying that when the kids hug me I can't hug them back and stuff and I'm like I okay fine okay because I I can understand that kind of situation or whatever but like they it just was like new stuff or whatever and and I felt like it was really just implemented on me because I was a male and stuff and I'm like okay like I can that's fine but. What did that all have to do with, like, the kids enjoying my company and me wanting to be in the classroom? So, it just, it kind of just, it was just, shit was just crazy, man. Like, that that in of itself, at some point, it was time for me to part ways with at least that daycare center. It's the daycare center where I live at, not too far. So, I might, if I decide to go back, I might go over there. But, it's all on pay, man. And right now, Audi is paying like 17 and daycare centers and stuff. At the time I was working there, the minimum wage was terrible, man. And I was like, you know what? There's extra money in my pocket, so why not? But at the time when I was working three jobs, and I was like, okay, so I was working at Marshall's there. And I had I had to part ways with the daycare center, but the daycare center wasn't the first job I left. The daycare center was actually... The second job I left because I was working at the daycare center and I was working at Audi at some point. But then that's where we're going to go ahead and talk about Marshalls. <laughs> Part two from Marshalls, man. Let's get it in.